So how do you see the issue of, uh, many say, the Asian wisdom? How will that shed the light on the upcoming G20 summit discussions? Look, the five principles of peaceful coexistence, the Bandung uh, Doctrine, uh, are the creations of another era, frankly. And I think that uh, just taking China itself, today's China shows a very different attitude towards these ideas of peaceful coexistence, of, of mutual respect. The, the words are the same, but now I think China applies the the principles very, very differently. It's kind of a human wisdom. We all would like to see a peaceful world, right? Uh, but um, I also kind of uh, slightly disagree with uh, Mr. Russell that, it, yes, uh, to some extent, those principles were proposed back in uh, a very different era, uh, you know, to uh, fight against uh, hegemony in Asia. Uh, but today, the difference is that China is already uh, a very powerful country. But China itself is proclaiming its own allegiance to these uh, five principles. So I think that makes China very different. Uh, second, uh, an undisputable fact about China's modernization is that the Chinese has uh, uh, achieved its own industrialization and modernization without ever fighting a war against its neighbor and has never occupied a single country. Um, so I think this truly makes the Chinese experience very different from mm. many Western countries. Um, so, so that's why I think you know, when China says we are committed to a peaceful development trajectory, uh, many people question. I think you, know, the, you can never stop people from questioning you, but I think you, know, you can prove with your own words and the deeds that China is indeed upholding these principles. Mm. Mr. Singh. I think that is where Asian wisdom stands out to be very different, where none of the countries, I love the mention of China's relationship with Russia at this moment, or India's relationship with Russia, they respect non-interference with each other's internal affairs, they respect each other's sovereignty, but there's a limit. You can't go and dictate another country how to run their affairs. And I think both China and India have shown a certain amount of restraint in that regard. So, you know, since Anglo-Saxon uh, wisdom has run the world so far in the last two, 200 years, and we know where we are in terms of energy crisis, climate crisis, terrorism, and so on, I think it is time to respect what is now being called the Asian moment. And I think it is time to listen to Asian wisdom. And G20 will definitely give that space to Asian wisdom. Your opinion about the so-called Asian wisdom and about the aspirations we could draw from history, uh, from a time when it was also very difficult for human being. Uh, we live in a very interesting world because we are all different. So we are not similar to each other. So, uh, but we have to face reality. So the world will listening strong ones. So Asia is getting stronger. In 25 years, Asia will produce half of the world GDP. So what is happening in Asia is that we have to understand each other. We are very different. And project, for instance, like Shanghai Cooperation Organization is clearly show that Asians will come close to each other. Asian genes is genes about family, about unification, about understanding, about trust. Mm. So we're going to get closer to each other and together we'll be stronger, more prosperous, and we have better voice. And G20 is indeed the unique forum where Asian countries could demonstrate more, more or less unified and synchronous and harmonious way of communicating to to the rest of the world. Mm. Asian way is not insistence, not pressure. Yeah? This is what my understanding from the deep of my heart, because I am Asian. And then to build harmonious world, Asia will be able to deliver its own contribution to make our world better place to live to everyone.